So I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who watched my first video. I really appreciate the support, and the constructive criticism. But I've also received a lot of suggestions for games and cheat codes to cover, and I do plan on getting to all of them. But in the meantime, I wanted to make a quick video covering one specific cheat code that I've always been interested in. In the last video, I talked about Doom and the company that created it, id Software. I also mentioned that walking through walls has been a pretty popular cheat code in first-person shooters. But the history of this effect, called no clipping, goes back a few years before id Software's FPS days. And in order to get the full story, we're gonna have to go all the way back to their very first game. Commander Keen Invasion of the Vorticons was a three-part series that began with a shareware episode called Marooned on Mars. In the early 1990s, software developers followed this business model which would offer the first episode of a game for free, called Shareware, but the remaining episodes would have to be purchased. Aside from being id Software's first game, Commander Keen also paved the way for no clipping as we know it today. Gameplay consists of side-scrolling platformer levels and a world map that allows you to choose the level that you want to play. However, there are a few places where your path is blocked and you have to progress in a more linear way. That is, of course, unless you activate what might be the simplest cheat code in gaming. By walking up to one of these levels and pressing Shift and Tab, you can actually just pass right through it. This was used by the developers to fast-track certain parts of the game in order to beta test things more quickly. As a result, only these individual barriers can be passed, and not the edges of the world map itself. id Software co-founder John Romero programmed this part of the game, and thus created the concept of no-clipping, but the term itself wasn't coined until a while later. A few months after Commander Keen, id Software released a puzzle game called Rescue Rover, and it had just two cheat codes in it. The first is activated by pressing C, T, and Enter at the same time, and this will let you play any level in the game but I wouldn't recommend it if this is your first time playing it. The second cheat code is activated with C, T, and G, and this will give you God Mode. Like many of id's games to come, these cheat codes actually have a bit of a hidden meaning. According to John Romero, the CT actually stands for Creative Tom. This is a direct reference to Tom Hall, id Software's co-founding creative director who served until mid-1993. Coincidentally, he also came up with the term God Mode, which itself would become a running theme in id's future games. So, turning on God Mode in Rescue Rover prevents you from being harmed, obviously, but you are still confined by the level itself, which is pretty normal. However, in Rescue Rover 2, enabling God Mode also removes collision detection, making you both invulnerable and ethereal. Since enemies attack based solely on their line of sight, it does make sense that these effects were combined, in order for developers to more easily test certain parts of the game. For the player, this means you can skip the puzzles and just rescue Rover. He'll even follow you through walls and other objects. But walking into something that would normally hurt you will occasionally cause Rover to just run away forever. If you wait long enough, he'll actually reappear from the other side of the screen, but there's no way to stop him or pick him back up. Funny enough, you can also do this by walking off the edge of the level. After a few seconds, you'll show up on the other side. And if you walk to the exit, Rover will rejoin you and you'll technically complete the level. It's also important to briefly note that during this era of PC gaming, keyboards could only detect one key being pressed per row at a time, and this is why Rescue Rover used C, T, and G. Later on, games like Doom would use a key buffer, which would track the individual keys being pressed during gameplay. So now we have a precedent for no-clipping, but the term didn't actually exist until id Software released their follow-up to Commander Keen called Secret of the Oracle. In order to access cheats like no-clipping, you'll first have to enable the debug mode by pressing A, 2, and Enter at the same time. The A2 is a reference to the Apple II personal computer, which famously launched in 1977 and was the first system that id Software's founders began programming on. Anyway, after entering debug mode in Commander Keen's Secret of the Oracle, pressing F10 and N will turn on no-clipping, and this is the first time the term is specifically mentioned in a video game. id Software co-founder John Carmack has described collision detection in gaming as clipping a movement vector. So when you collide with an object you're not supposed to walk through, your movement vector is being clipped. No-clipping disables this collision detection, and in the case of Secret of the Oracle, enabling no-clipping in the world map will allow you to walk anywhere you want and access any of the game's 18 levels. 
but if you leave the map completely, the game will punish you by taking a life. This still happens even if you have god mode turned on. Enabling no clip inside of a level will simply cause you to fall right through the screen. But if you're moving while you're doing it, chances are you'll just pop back up, and no clipping will then be disabled. Generally speaking, every floor tile in the game is also a ledge, so if you're falling through one of these tiles and happen to touch another one, the game thinks you're just grabbing onto the side of a ledge, no harm done. But falling straight down and out of the level completely will kill you. You can get around this by pressing F10 and J, enabling infinite jumping, and so you can just fly around the level instead. But without turning on god mode with F10 and G, you will still get hit by enemies. Okay, so we've got no clipping in top-down and side-scrolling games, but what about no clipping in the third dimension? For that, let's fast-forward a few months to a game called Wolfenstein 3D, which honestly shouldn't need an introduction at this point, but just in case, it is widely regarded as the grandfather of first-person shooters. Its cheat codes are also pretty well documented, and that includes no clipping, but only for earlier versions of the shareware copy of the game. After starting Wolfenstein 3D in debug mode, using a command line parameter corresponding to the game's version number, holding left shift, alt, and backspace while playing will enable cheat codes. Then, just like Commander Keen, press F10 and N to activate no clipping. You'll now be able to walk through any part of the level, but you'll notice some strange graphical effects when you do. This is likely because of how the game engine interprets nearby services and creates the fake 3D effect that simulates a first-person experience. Of course, no clipping also appears in Doom, and it's activated by typing ID SPIS POPD. But in Doom 2, it's been renamed to ID Clip, for simplicity's sake. And just like Wolfenstein 3D, leaving the boundaries of a level has some interesting results. In this case, it's called a Hall of Mirrors effect, and it happens because the game engine is trying to draw an image of what is essentially nothing. So it ends up repeating or mirroring the last thing that was successfully drawn. You can also see this in levels where walls are either not connected properly or not textured, which leaves an empty space into nothing. For example, this is map 18 in the original release of Doom 2, and you can see these two walls here are not quite connected. In the original games, this Hall of Mirrors is sort of a shimmering effect, which persists until you re-enter the level. But in modern source ports of the game, like GZ Doom, this effect is static. In Icon of Sin, the final boss level of Doom 2, the no-clip cheat can be used to walk inside of this massive boss demon. This will reveal John Romero's head gruesomely stuck on a spike. It also takes damage if you shoot it. And this is because, well, you're not actually fighting this demon. You're supposed to activate an elevator in the center of the level, jump on top of it, and make a well-timed shot at the demon's exposed brain, where enemies are constantly being spawned from. When you shoot the brain, it's John Romero's head that takes the damage, and doing enough damage will complete the game. Moving away from id Software briefly, 3D Realm's 1996 shooter, Duke Nukem 3D, also makes use of the noclip cheat, but instead of typing ID clip, you would type DN clip to activate it. It's interesting to note that just like Commander Keen, Duke Nukem 3D will kill the player for going out of bounds, or even just walking through doors. And yes, this happens with god mode enabled. Id Software's next game, Quake, was released just a few months after Duke Nukem 3D, and it fundamentally changed the way that cheat codes were accessed in first-person shooters. So, to activate noclip mode, you wouldn't just type something out in the game while you were playing it, you would first pull up a command console with the tilde key, and then enter noclip. The first version of the game, without any hardware acceleration, fixes the shimmering effect previously found in Doom. You'll notice everything outside the map is a solid grey colour, and the game only draws parts of the level that it thinks you're looking at. But strangely enough, the more modern, hardware-accelerated versions of Quake will produce the Hall of Mirrors effect. This can be sort of fixed by opening the console again and entering GL underscore clear 1. You'll see that everything outside the level is now bright red, but it's not really a great fix. It would take Quake 2, released 18 months after Quake, to set the example for no clipping that nearly every other first-person shooter has followed since. This includes the ability to fly through levels, using the mouse to look around. You'll also notice the same red effect from before is still used here, but now it's overlaid across the whole screen. This is likely an added indicator to let the player know that they're out of bounds. You know, instead of just killing them like in Duke Nukem 3D. Dynamic world objects like enemies and items also disappear when you leave the level area. 
This may have been done to lower the strain on PC hardware of that time period, as the whole level is being drawn rather than just parts of it, like in Quake. In the 20 plus years since Quake 2's release, countless games have followed its example, at least as far as no clipping is concerned. I could go on about other games that have used it since, but honestly, I would just be belaboring the point. It is tough to overstate its influence though. It's still a big part of PC gaming today, and there's a great gaming documentary channel called Noclip that you should definitely check out. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you learned something new from it, but if you have something to add, let me know in the comments. And if you want to support this series, feel free to subscribe or check out the Patreon page for extra content. Until next time, my name's Kyle, and this has been Codex.